tabletop update. What's going on with my tent scales? What is going on with my tent scales? I don't know. We have a host of cars here. We'll get to what's going on back back there in a moment. For right now, you guys know this is my uh, Tamiya TA05. Uh, I did 98 miles an hour on 2S in it, um, which, you know, sounds like good speed, but really I'm shooting for over 120, maybe hopefully 130 in that car. Uh, it's not there yet. There's a couple things I need to do, but uh, I will be using this body. I, I mean, I've been trying to find, you. Can, basically you can't buy this body without buying a TA05 IFS, all right? It doesn't come by itself. There's one guy trying to sell one out in the Netherlands for like $127 because the kits are difficult to find, but you know, you have to buy the kit to get the body. You can't buy the body separate. Show you guys what's going on underneath of there. I'm using a, an X car in here. I'm only running two cells on it, so I'm not really too worried about it. Basically, when we get to that, I'll, I'll, basically I'm, I'm getting rid of almost everything on this table. I'm getting rid of this, this, and the TD10. Uh, and I got two other new cars that I'm working on in the back there. Team Corrali RDX Phi. My last crash, it nicked the curb and it busted the uh, busted the rear pulley and cracked it. Let's see if I can get it to turn into the crack part. Cracked it in half there. So you can see. Cracked the pulley. It also did damage to the rear frame right here. It pushed it out of alignment, and now the uh, the rear diff rear diff is fine, but the the diff housing is bent. So I'm most likely going to put this on eBay uh, for parts because it's a really good car. I mean, the issue with it flipping was more to do with the body than the, than the actual car. The TD10, the TD10 is going to run one more time. I'm running that at the next that in shot. I'm running that at the next Run DMV. Uh, I got some gearing changes, so I'm not going to take the top off of that. But uh, it's going to be for sale after next run DMV. Uh, this car, it flipped once. But uh, again, that was my fault. I didn't put enough uh, stop in the rear. The springs were too light in the back. So the car, the car nosed up, but I fixed it. So, you know, I ran it again last weekend for what? I got 131. The highest I got in the car is 132. Uh, this is the X-Ray. T1. Uh, this is the Evo 2. The original one I had was just the actually T1. Uh, this is the Evo 2. Uh, it had lipo fire, or not lipo fire, but a uh, ESC fire. It's fine, as you can see. It used to be uh, a lot of smoke damage, but you know, I took it outside, sprayed it down, washed it all off. The only thing, the only way you can really tell is that this size is slightly darker, but you can't really tell on camera. It's a little bit darker right here, and it's still got a little bit of hmm hmm I couldn't wash off because it was down under there on it um, but it's a good car uh, if you are thinking about purchasing this car it, the best thing to do what I was going to do with the car is get one of uh, Mike Mike B's 10,000 kV um, motors and throw it in here because basically if you put the he's it's really long that can is like maybe like this long if you put that can on a regular thing it's gonna stick way out of the car but in this car as you can see the motor goes through the through the center and off to the side all right, so you can fit a lot more can in there. And that's what I was going to do with this car. But, you know, I, I got the Tamiya now. And the Tamiya is uh, going to end up a, well, a better car for me anyways, doing 2S on. So this this is my uh, Trinity Reflex NT. It's a uh, you know, regular 10 scale nitro conversion. All of these cars are pretty much built the same. The, uh, what is the... Was it Team Magic G4 is pretty much the same car. The Kyosho's version, the Mugen version, the Serpent version, they're all pretty much the same. There's slight differences in the internal gear ratios, but they're pretty much all the same. So this one I got on the cheap cheap, and I'm using it. There you go. I ran 131 on 6S last week. You guys have seen that video. Uh, once I get the new... <laughs> I forgot to disable reverse in the ESC. I didn't, well, I didn't forget. I just was testing the car and I didn't want to end up nosing, nosing the curb and not be able to have to walk a quarter mile to go get the car and turn off the curb. So I didn't disable it and I was braking, braking, braking and I think it shot into full reverse and blew both the belts out. So I got extra belts or new belts. I got some uh, tough racing ones coming in too. It's just these were actually in America. And if you've ever bought tough racing belts before, you know it takes like three weeks 
for those belts to get in. So I wanted to be able to use the car again, so I got the regular belts. They're still good, as long as I don't throw the car in reverse at 131 miles an hour, right? I think any belt's good, as long as you don't throw the car in reverse at 131 miles an hour. All that stuff aside, let's talk about that new stuff back there. This is an X-Ray T3. Uh, it's going to replace the TD10. Take it on the other TD10 and put them in here. And yeah, it's a great car. I got it at a great price. Um, hopefully, it'll show me some good numbers. It's a little worn on the bottom, but you know, for what we're going to be doing, it makes absolutely zero, zero difference. Car set up good, rolls well. You know, I'm going to throw a belt tension around here as well. Maybe one up on the bottom. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it yet, but. Belts are in good shape. The teeth are in good shape. These are the low friction belts. It's always good. Uh, they're a little loose, but uh, belt tensioner about right there should be fine. Tighten that, tension that up. Um, yeah, pretty cool car. Got a great deal on it. So that's going to replace the TD10. And then I got what's in this box. Indescript box. I got my knife. Beam Cat. Thank you for your business. You are welcome, Beam Cat. All right. That is the Kodo HT1. It's by a company called Tressray. They do um, mostly hop-up parts for uh, Team Durango and they made a touring car I saw it and I liked it a lot and even better I like the price of it um, so I'll be putting that together hopefully I'll have it ready for the next run DMV next, the next run DMV is gonna be on June 26 guys so uh, and I think what we're gonna do is uh, we're only gonna run them once a month but you know I'll make a video about that later that's the Kodo uh, HT1 you can go check that out on, on eBay or uh, Google it. It's a really nice car. Four-wheel drive touring. And I think this is going to be, and this may be a, my, my five-cell car, or I may try to run it on as a two-cell car as well. Say if I ever break my, my Tamiya. But, you know, when you see something for that's high quality for the right price, I usually go, I just go pick it up and I sell everything else, which is what I'm doing. All right, guys, that was it. I just want to give you guys a quick update on what I got going on. Um, Run DV is still happening, so, uh, you know, come check us out. Um, I think that's it, guys. I think I covered everything. If anybody has one of these bodies and they want to sell it and it's uncut, because <laughs> I, if you guys have seen my cars, my wheel wells are tight. I keep them as tight as I possibly can. I bought this car used from my friend Sean, and his wheel wells are not tight. No, sir. No, sir, they're not. Very loosey goosey. If you can see that, like all the space around the wheel there in the front, a lot of space. Like I don't I don't ever do that. My my wheel wells come out more like this. Barely any spacing around that wheel. Like when you and when the wheel settles in, it's really tight in there. And that's how I like it. That's how I like it. All right, guys, deuces, you silly gooses, and let's get that ten scale speed.